Ladies and gentlemen, it is the game of the millennium, one day away. Ohio State and undefeated Maryland, the unbeaten Mutant Ninja Terrapins coming into the horseshoe noon Saturday. What better way to get ready than with bold predictions on the podcast daily? That is Bill Landis and Jeremy Birmingham. I am Austin Ward. Berm, why are you shaking your head? This is massive. Two Uh, unbeaten uh, teams. It is big noon kickoff. My first bold prediction is that... You already, the first you already used this comments. joke once this week. Three of the first five comments on this episode on YouTube will be people chastising you for not taking Ohio State opponents seriously. And uh, I think I'm on their side. Just so you know. Okay, fine. Go for it. Tell me how good Maryland is. Awesome. I'm not saying I'm. it's not a Maryland issue. It's a, it's a you issue. <laughs> it's specific to Maryland. Just because teams aren't as good as Ohio State doesn't mean they're bad. That's all I'm saying. Okay, so let's just let's just couch that conversation. Okay, just tell me how good you think they are. I think that they are good enough to make this a interesting game for a quarter and a half or so, and that's hmm. you know maybe even a half, maybe even a full half, um, maybe even three quarters because they've proven that they can do that with Ohio State. Now, have they proven that at home against when Ohio State's in Columbus? Certainly not. The Buckeyes have outscored mm. Maryland in their f- four games in Columbus by an average score of 63 to 19. Uh, oh, so that's, interesting that's, stat. That's telling. That's telling. Um, one of the, the highest scoring Maryland output in Columbus was actually 2015 when Mike Loxley was the um, interim head coach for Randy Etzel in that season, which is, I guess, sort of weird because Mike Loxley actually did coach against Ohio State back then. Um, I, I don't think it's going to be like a nail biter, but I think that Maryland has enough athletes to make some plays that uh, will at least have you know some some athletic comp you know comp. That's all I'm saying. It's not a it's not a talent equated game. It's not a game where Maryland is as good one through twenty two as Ohio State is, or one through five as Ohio State is. But to just suggest that they're the a terrible team, I just don't buy it. I just don't buy I it. Call they, them have, they haven't, the they haven't lost. They haven't lost. Mutant Ninja Terrapins. They haven't what lost. What praise State can State I give them? I'm just saying, they haven't lost since Ohio State beat them last November. So, uh, you know, they, they're playing good football. I called it the it's game credit. of the millennium, and and yeah. compared them to superheroes. I what bet. What more can I do, Bill? Bill, is it your opinion that perhaps Austin is being sarcastic when he says that? Because that is how I'm taking it. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, that I just wasn't oh, sure. Yeah. It felt uh, disingenuous is what I'm saying. What? What do you two know? Nothing. First you real guys, bold prediction. This is the first podcast we've ever even done together. You don't, you don't know how I feel. <laughs> the first real bold prediction I have for Saturday is that Kyle McCord throws a touchdown pass. Um because he has not done that against Ohio State's Power 5 opponents this year. God, that was uh, going to be mine. So, <laughs> suck it, Bill. Uh, Ohio State will throw three touchdown passes on Saturday, all of them by Kyle McCord. And I know that doesn't feel that bold in the in the history of Ohio State football recently when you're talking about all the quarterback success, but Ohio State's played four games. Kyle McCord has six touchdowns, and none of them are against Power 5 opponents, so it's time to... Put it on the board. Yes. Three touchdowns for Kyle McCord. That's it's it. not, it's not his fault. Big 10 officiating crew had to take one, steal one away from him, and then Emeka Ibuka dropped one. It's not Kyle's fault. That's just a quirk. Yeah. It that is, is true. kind of weird, though. It he's is. Made, he, he has yeah, made five It is true, starts. though. Yeah. yeah, he's made five starts and hasn't thrown a touchdown against the Power 5 defense yet. It's weird. Mm. It is. That'll be over on Saturday. It will be, because I'm going to piggyback off of what Berm said. I'm going to go one further. Four touchdowns for Kyle McCord in this game, which would be a new career, or maybe Ty's career high. He might have thrown four against Akron, actually. Akron, yeah. Did he throw four against Akron? Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. I don't know. Was, it, was it four? No. It was three, I think. It was three, yeah. Nope, we're both wrong. It was two. <clears throat> and he threw an interception. Wow. wow. So four, four will be a new career high uh, for Kyle McCord against Maryland. Maryland. Maryland's secondary last year was actually pretty good. Um their two starting corners are both drafted. One is like starting for the New York Giants right now. And I'm pretty sure Marvin Harrison Jr. said like that was the best corner he faced last year was Deontay Banks. So he's gone. The other guy's gone. The two guys they have in their place, uh, Tar Heap Steele and then the transfer from Cincinnati named Jaquan Shepard. Like I, I don't just don't think they're of the caliber. I think it's a, a good day for Ohio State's passing offense, a comfortable day for Kyle McCord. And he rips four tutties. 
where are they going to go? Mm, stay tuned, maybe. Ooh. No, that's actually not. That's actually not one of my uh, other predictions. So I don't know. Uh, how about one to Marvin, two to Mecca, and one to Xavier Johnson? Hmm. I like that. Drilling down. Um, What's I your word word prediction? I think he's going to throw for. 284 yards and two touchdowns and a lot of the red zone drives will still be finished out on the ground by Ohio State not wanting to do the things that I ask for and beg to watch over and over and I think that means bigger games for Chip Trainum and Travion Henderson um, you know I think part of this is because I was going to lead it off and saying that I think Marvin is only going to finish with three catches in this game Um Maybe that's an overreaction to him talking on Wednesday night after practice about this ankle injury being more severe than the one he worked through a year ago when he was still, in my opinion, and many others, the best wide receiver in the country. Um, he can play on a sprained ankle and be really good. Um, it, this is pretty fresh still. Um, he's had tape on it virtually every time we've seen him. He had a walking boot on on Wednesday night in the Woody Hayes Athletic Center when he was going through his drills on the Monarch. Don't just don't push it. Like I, it's not worth it. I, I think Ohio State. I personally believe, no matter what, no matter how good Maryland is, uh, how dynamic they've been in all five games against really elite opponents so far this year, that Ohio State can win this game comfortably without Marvin Harrison. So, don't risk it. Um, he's got to play. He's not going to sit out. I don't expect that. But <clears throat> get through the game. Don't tax it that much. Rotate a little bit more if you need to. If that means Carnell Tate, if that means just rolling with, you know, more stuff for Mecca and Julian and Xavier Johnson, we'll see how that transpires. But I think he's going to have to take some some reps off. And he acknowledged he was already doing a lot of that in practice right now, uh, or at least some of that. I guess we don't know the full extent, but I think that's going to have to spill over to this game because to be a hundred percent frank about it, Maryland and Purdue do not matter compared to Penn State. I think it's kind of weird because Tuesday he was walking around fine. And the Wednesday's in a, a walking boot. Why do you think that is? Was that gamesmanship on the high state's part? Because when we were in there on Tuesday afternoon, he didn't seem to have any issues. Did he re-aggravate it on Wednesday or did the Buckeyes just know all the media was going to be in there at six o'clock on Wednesday? So they're like, hey, let's put him in a walking boot. Because it didn't well, look to me on Tuesday that there was any sort of lingering issue. Am I wrong? Yeah. And I passed along that update on Tuesday because he didn't have it fully taped up at that point. And I'm trying to figure it out, trying to answer like as honestly as I can. Like maybe he didn't practice fully on Tuesday and that was one o'clock compared to this was him coming off the practice field last night. So that was after two practices. Yeah, maybe, maybe. So, so, so I don't, I, I can't tell you that I honestly know the answer to that, but at one o'clock when he was in there and we were in there on, in the Woody on Tuesday, like it wasn't time to practice. He hadn't been on the practice field and, and maybe that was part of that. Was he wearing it when you guys talked to him? No, he was not. Okay. He he had still had, I believe, a little bit of tape on the right ankle, but nothing else. He had some slides on, uh, no walking boot. So he went into the locker room, got changed, showered, and put on a walking boot after practice. So it seems precautionary to me just to keep some stress off of it uh, when you're not on the field. Smart. Sure. sure. Yeah. Do you guys – what's your percentage chance that he doesn't play on Saturday? Zero. Zero? If, Marvin, if Marvin's walking, Marvin's going to play at least a series or two. Mm. Because that's Marvin. Yeah, it's, it's not it's not a comment on on his willingness to do so. It's more about what Austin said. Like, I don't I don't know that you need to push it. And uh I kind of feel like we're getting smoke screened a little bit. <laughs> I agree yeah. that he probably doesn't need to play. I'm not saying he doesn't, I'm not saying that isn't the conversation, but I think that you shouldn't go into this game assuming and again this is where there's going to be that difference in opinion about what maryland is now they haven't played a top 80 offense in the country they're they're obviously not a team what that, um is is going to be like out there and and punching you in the mouth over and over again like penn state or with notre dame how or dare you sir how oh, dare my. you talk about maryland that way so oh, i can understand the impulse to say let's hold him back these next two weeks but i think the offense is at a point where it needs continuity and it needs to get chemistry between 
this whole offense heading into the meat of the season. And I don't think if, if he's able to play, I don't think you voluntarily remove him from that when you're still trying to work on on the offensive cohesion. That's why I would say he still needs to play. Yeah, I think that's fair because I do think, I think regardless, I, I do think he's able to play. Like I'm not, I'm not saying that we're gonna get to Saturday and like, oh no, he's not ready to go. Like I think he's ready to go. It's gonna be a question of whether or not you want to play him. Yeah, but I, I think he he went back in the game at Notre Dame, and I thought his right. leg was snapped off um, yeah. on the on the field. So, um, Berm said that Mike about, Loxley's teams don't punch people in the face. Like he's just goading me at this. Point. I was setting that one up for you, but uh, you didn't hit it. It was like Bill not seeing go birds on Tuesday when Jim Knowles mentioned Philly. Um, <laughs> so. Uh, again, Maryland has not played any offense that's ranked inside of the top 80 uh, in their first five games. And their two Big Ten teams they've played are Indiana and Michigan State. Very, very bad. Um, Ohio State, short yarded situation. We've beaten that, you know, that that drum all week. I think the way you avoid that is what we talked about in Snap Judgments on Tuesday. Just score from outside of the red zone. Um, five Ohio State touchdowns of more than 20 yards in this game. Five of them. Ooh, I like it. Three of them through the air, two of them on the ground, both by Travion Henderson. I like the idea of treating the twenty yard line like hot lava, just like stopping before you get there and then just throwing Absolutely. it over every time. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> the field is lava. <laughs> That's the way it should be. I mean, the end zone at Safe Harbor. Avoid that. In, avoid that area. It's called the red zone for a reason. Lava is red. <laughs> it is. I think. But some, I'm not I guess sure that's true, is it? I guess it's orangish. It's the color of burning hot ember. But uh, either way, you know what's not burning hot? Ohio State on short yardage. So oh, avoid that it. area. Avoid that area at all costs. Five touchdowns of more than twenty yards. Three passing, two rushing, both by Travion Henderson. I like it. Layers to that one. Uh, I'm not even done. Both of those are in the first okay. quarter by Travion Henderson. Okay. Anything else? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I never know when to quit. <laughs> this guy just loves, well, we do we do bull prediction and Burns is like giving 17 of them. Yeah, that's just like his single game parlays. Just keep <laughs> going, baby. Um I uh I thought the play I'm gonna hit one of them one day and I'm gonna be yeah. like, yes, sucker. <laughs> How dare you doubt me, bro? Just send a picture to us from the beach. Yeah. Like, I want my parlay. I'm out eighty five thousand dollars. <laughs> Cost me fifteen cents. <laughs> I uh, I was a big fan of the play that they ran against Notre Dame when they dropped the defensive tackles in the coverage, and um, I think maybe we see that again. But also too, like Jack and Jack Sawyer and JT Tuimolowau are pretty adept at also like jumping those perimeter screens, and I think Maryland likes to get some of those going as well. So I think a defensive lineman is going to have an interception in this game for Ohio State. Oh um, come on! Yeah, 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 yeah. We're going there. I like to steal one too. Um, I, I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent sure. I, I, I guess I'll go with JT cause he's done it. Like, I think he's probably the most likely to do it. Um, but you can pick and pick a defensive tackle. Awesome. Just jump. I don't want to pick a tackle. Pick I want to pick going to be Jack Sawyer. He does it. pick your it's guy no, hero. Canoe to get an interception. It's going to be I'm Jack right. Sawyer. Cause Maryland's going to go away from where JT is to run those screens. And Jack's Jack's been close a couple times already. This Yeah. Season. Yeah. I, I don't know why there are any teams that think that they can run a screen to JT's side. Like, you didn't watch the Penn State game, and Notre Dame's like, watch this. We're going to dial it up on second and 15. They're cooked. JT will never know it's coming. What are you thinking? Run it any other place on the field except at Ohio State's best defensive lineman. Give me a break. Um, Give him a break. Pick me up. Yeah. Now scramble and figure out, figure out a new one. Okay. Yeah. Well, I did think that JT was probably going to pick off a screen in this game. So instead – I think that Josh Proctor is going to not drop an interception in this game. There you go. And that doesn't mean that he's not going to have an opportunity. He's going to actually catch the ball. And I don't know if he'll take it. He might. Yeah, he might take it back for a touchdown. He will, in fact, take it back for a touchdown. I'll tack that in there because my score prediction is evolving on the fly. Josh Proctor, pick six. Uh, as as insanely hot as Talia Tagovailoa has been in these first five games, probably playing, I don't know, like better than Caleb, better than Caleb Williams. Like I don't know how he's not the Heisman Trophy frontrunner right now. That's stuff <sighs> that you just can't explain. But um, there have been instances in his career, believe it or not, where he can be forced into mistakes and turnovers, even against teams like I don't know Charlotte, 
Um, if that happened at any point, maybe this season, that would be surprising to me if he had two interceptions against a team like that. But yeah, but that's uh, understandable. They folk they practiced all week watching film of Nick Bosa and got out there and like, oh, shit, wrong 49ers. <laughs> So, like, your entire game plan. We're cursing on this show now? I'll beep that out. I I got sliggled. Sorry about that. Um, Just kidding, now. Don't beep it out. (laughs) Leave it in there. It's bold. It's spicy. It's it's bold. That's for sure. Too spicy for the pepper. (laughs) Too spicy. Um, I don't. I don't. He can be rattled. I think he will be. Ohio State's secondary is playing at a very high level. That is my... Uh, dead serious take that the BIA is on the way back and they will prove it against one of the very best quarterbacks that the game of football has ever seen. I think uh, Berman, I have, I think respect Talia certainly more than you do. I actually think he's a pretty good college quarterback, but he is prone to games where he loses his mind. He has seven career games with multiple interceptions. If, yeah. If you two would say it that way, I would agree with you. I said and, I, I, he's like a top 15, top 20 quarterback in college football. Like that's not on, on, that's not what you said on Tuesday. I, on Tuesday, I said top 15. I'm going to give uh, I'm going to give a little bit. I'm you started the conversation. 10. Come on, let's. I didn't say I was about 10. I was about to give you guys both some credit and say that maybe some of what I say about him is wrong. What you started the conversation with is like this is going to be the second best quarterback that Ohio State plays all year. Is I what said, you said. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think if he's on his game, if he plays the, if he plays the way he played a year ago, I think that's all That's arguable. Okay. I, I, now to your point, Ohio state has to get pressure on him. If they do that, then you change who he is as a quarterback, but that's like all quarterbacks and Ohio state didn't do a very good job getting pressure on him a year ago until the end of the game when they got a turnover and, and, and win the game, you know, they win by 13, but that was a, a, obviously a one score game with two minutes to go. Um, the kid has some some skill. They they do a nice job scheming up what he does. I don't love Josh Gaddis as an offensive coordinator. I think that he's probably going to ultimately make Atali a, a worse quarterback than he was a year ago. Um, but I, I think I think Ohio State can get to him because I don't think Maryland's offensive line is going to be. Uh, I think Maryland's offensive line is good enough that they trust it, but. Bad enough that a team like Ohio State should be able to get to the quarterback. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the the re- concession that I've come around on with the points that you two have made and many others is that it was asked on uh, subtext for our tech subscribers, like, well, how does this compare with Sam Hartman? Like, how do I evaluate those two? I actually think that Talia is more dangerous to Ohio State than Sam Hartman was. I think that he is a better college quarterback than Sam Hartman. I don't think he is a better NFL prospect. I don't think that his arm talent is better. If you just gave them both a clean pocket and the ability to uh, you know, read through any progression they want and throw it anywhere they want, I think Sam Hartman would win that battle between Talia. But factoring in his mobility and an offense that is more suited to taking advantage of his athleticism, he does create challenges. I will not suggests that he doesn't. I've seen him do that to Ohio State, including last year in College Park. He played a hell of a game. Not, I'm not taking anything away from him, but I've seen a lot of other oppor- other games where that makes him more volatile. So the high-end potential of Talia at his best is definitely more of a threat to Ohio State than Sam Hartman. Yeah, to me, like if you take all the quarterbacks Ohio State plays this year and they play their A-plus game, I think that he is only behind JJ McCarthy as the guy who like you worry about that could single handedly like change the way the game is played. I don't think he's as good as or as talented as Austin Reed, but well, but that's Western Kentucky. You're not going to get that's not going to be a, a fight no matter what, no matter how good Austin Reed played, um, and he played pretty good. So I just think that's where Talia. We saw him last year play in a game and it was like oh crap this is actually uh scary but that's an ohio state defense that didn't know what the hell they were doing so uh and now you hope that you have that year of experience where things are different you hope that as i'm saying like maryland's offensive line is pretty good but they haven't played anyone that's any good yet so when you're playing against elite talent like ohio state has on their defensive line i think maryland goes into that game trusting their offensive line and saying hey we're gonna we're gonna give talia the chance to beat them 
And so you do that by throwing the ball and trusting that your offensive line isn't going to need help with extra blockers in there. And I think that's going to be a mistake. I think Ohio State, which only has five sacks in the first four games of the season, gets five sacks on Saturday. Mm. From whom? Uh, I'm going to take two from Michael Hall, one from Jack Sawyer, one from Caden Curry, and one from Tommy Eichenberg. Do you think any restaurants have approached Caden Curry yet about putting something on the menu called Caden's Curry? I hope so. Do you guys like curry? Yeah. Do you like like Thai curry or Indian curry? I don't think I've ever had Indian curry. I do like Thai curry. There's you ever there's a the ramen place that's like near campus. They have a, a apparently it's a hidden menu item, Ooh. but it's waffle fries with uh like curry like Thai curry on it. Very good. Hmm. So it's like an Indian poutine almost. Yes, yeah, it's exactly what it is. Yeah, it's quite good. Love it. Yeah. It's got I mean, cheese well, it. Okay, so there are cheese curds, so it's like a Thai poutine. Interesting. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, quite you have piqued my interest, sir. Uh, <laughs> I am a. I love a very hot red Thai curry. Delightful. Mm. The sp- the spice might might leave something to be desired on this, but it's wow. the flavors are tremendous. You know, I like it a spice. Uh. <laughs> Do a level to spice, eh? All right. Five sacks, huh? Five sacks. Um, the season total. This is not really based on um like any kind of research. I just I kind of think Maryland's gonna return a kick for a touchdown in this game. I don't know why. I I feel like Ohio State's coverage teams have been they're better this year. Like last year, I thought they got a little leaky and weren't really burned for it. Um I don't know. Like that, the, they still do that thing where they kick it into the corner, and like I still think they're vulnerable to somebody taking it wide on them and scoring a touchdown. And Maryland always has very good special teams. Um, it's like the one thing they do consistently. They have returned a kick for a touchdown already this year. Um, I don't think any of the good metrics for Maryland are real. Um, I do think they're going to end up probably winning like eight or nine games because of the nature of their schedule, but like. They're they're not what these numbers will tell you who the, what, what these numbers will lead you to believe. So I think Ohio State does win comfortably, but it's slightly closer than it should be because Maryland gets a special teams touchdown. Jalen Lucas for Indiana returned like five kickoffs in that game for thirty yards, and they got a block in the back penalty on each one. So like, there's a chance that you can still see that. I mean, the first game you got new guys out there yeah. playing Gunner and stuff, but I agree. I thought last year Ohio State's coverage team was poor, and I haven't been particularly impressed by them this year either. That also made me pay more attention to who was out there covering kickoffs than I tend to do. Um, I I like to fast forward it, uh, even when it's live and in game, like doesn't matter. But like I I did notice that Denzel Burke was playing on the wide side of the field. So like Ohio State is taking that part seriously. Like it wasn't at least at Notre Dame. That I, I didn't check to confirm that's the way that's been every single game. Burn might already know, but he's um, been out there most of them. At yeah, least so he's. Part. To, to shore up that side, which is where you the most danger would seem to come, given the way Ohio State kicks it off, like they know that and they're putting somebody they can really trust to make that tackle. So uh, we'll see. Uh, not not questioning that bold prediction in any way, but it, it has felt like it's been better than it was last year when Byrne was predicting that to happen every single week. <laughs> it was scary last week. Last yeah, it was. They, yeah. were, they were bad at it. Yeah. Um. I I don't think that Ohio State is going to return a kick in this game, just to be clear. <laughs> but Cade Stover, I think, is going to score both of those touchdowns from Kyle McCord that I predicted earlier on. I, he's due for it. Uh, and if Marvin is not one of those options down there in the lava zone, let's, let's see the tight end involved in there. I'm, I'm going to speak it into existence. The yardage bets have all been hitting quite easily for Cade Stover. Now it's time for an anytime tutty. I think he'll double it up, and he's going to lead the passing attack against Maryland in one of the biggest games that the horseshoe has ever seen. <laughs> had to get, had to get that in there. <laughs> I just am so excited. Like we're just a little over twenty-four hours away, and it's two unbeaten teams in a Big Ten battle, and it's October. Uh, what what is it? Seventh October. It's gonna 7th. feel like football weather on Saturday. Yeah, yeah I mean, brisk morning, brisk. Firm's gonna be bundled up. And he's gonna have some like stocking hat on. Complain about how cold it is. Got your gloves out, ready. 
still got a pack, but yeah, I mean, uh, I'm gonna have it all ready. All right. Now there's now a twenty percent chance of rain, just to make oh, it worse. So, oh yeah. Although that's later in the day, that so they say. But I'm I'm on high alert. Don't <laughs> get yourself. Don't worry. Brim Cantori is on the forecast to get ready for Saturday at noon. Ohio State and Maryland. Hope you all are as excited as we what are. What about score to go. predictions? I don't. We think already do that. Right. I know, but I've changed mine from earlier in the week. Earlier in the week at Roosters, I said like you, 31, 14. You gave it at uh, weekend kickoff. Uh, yeah, but I, I want to be, I want to double down and make sure people understand that this show happens on YouTube before weekend kickoff. <laughs> You're always giving away the secrets. You're already in Columbus right now. 42 to 17, Ohio State will win the game. Five touchdowns, all over 20 yards. Five sacks. Does his score prediction work with his bold predictions? That's what I never know. Yeah, I didn't predict any defensive scores or anything like that. Okay. Five sacks, five touchdowns. Five uh, touchdowns over 20 yards. Yeah. No, I think it all, I think it all works. Yeah. And one more touchdown somewhere else. Let's drill down. Where? Uh, let's go with... Uh, I think I like the Stover pick. Um, and I, I'm I'm on board with that. I think that uh, that's in there. Is he he hasn't scored yet this year, right? He has not. Yeah. Weird. Overdue. Three, three games over five catches, but no no scores. But again, as we said, Kyle McCord has not thrown a touchdown against a, a power five opponent. So time to get off the schneid for everyone. He will have an opportunity Saturday at noon in the Horseshoe. It's Ohio State and Maryland. Thanks for joining us on the podcast daily. It is. Freaky Friday. These were bold predictions. Have a great weekend for Bill and Burham. I'm Austin. We will talk to you later.